is up. Jay, how are we doing? Doing great, my friend. The uh, I'm actually looking at the bet online odds uh, after last night's State of the Union address, and Joe Biden has closed the gap with Donald Trump, believe it or not. Really? I, I guess it was the uh, Lincoln Riley reference had to had to have been. Uh, what are those betting odds, by the way? Uh, Trump to win the presidency in November is even money, minus 110. Biden is plus 150. And anybody else on the planet is plus 375. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get into Arkansas at Alabama. And before we talk about it specifically, do we need to start worrying about the Bammers, the Roll yes, Tide? absolutely, because they can't guard anybody. anybody. I mean, hey, there are two teams in this league, two teams that are going to break your bracket. Alabama, Alabama is Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee. If, 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 as long as Dalton Connect shows up, if they can get him to the gym and he didn't roll an ankle, but uh, both of those teams – Alabama is just a tournament nightmare because they can – if they get a favorable draw, especially against a team that maybe is a little bit defensively indifferent, they can score on anybody. But they just are – I mean, they are allergic to defensive intensity. They are. And when you live and die by the three – in March, you're going to die more often than you live. But at the same time, they're making shots. They can beat anybody. But And now we got another injury. Now, Wright Cell finally came back the other night. He had missed four games. But now Ryland Griffin, who's questionable tomorrow, got hurt against Florida. They said that he was going to get an MRI the next day. Now, I, I have not been doing Twitter searches. I just saw that he's questionable. So maybe there is some information out there. Well, of course uh, you're going to sit him, though. I mean, sure. It, there are four teams booked right there, and don't get me wrong. And we can talk about this in in terms of Saturday matchups. Those four teams should be highly motivated to try to get a two or a three, because for the for next week's SEC tournament in Nashville, those four teams all at uh, behind uh, Tennessee, which locked up the SEC regular season title, its first outright title in 16 years um, earlier this week against South Carolina. But South Carolina, Auburn, Alabama, and Kentucky are all knotted right there at, I think, 12 and 5. And if you're 4 and 5 in that one, you've then got to play a dude in the quarterfinals and then play Tennessee in Nashville in the semifinals just to get to the SEC title game. Correct, and you don't want to have played four games in four days before the tournament. You don't right. want, like, in other words, I don't right. think Florida's going to get on the, in the top four. I don't. Let's see. Okay, we're. Um, Which means you've got to fade Florida in the SEC tournament, right? They feel good about their chances. They played great the last three and a half weeks, as good as just about anybody in the league, and I mean. Todd Golden's not going to want his team to play Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, I don't want us to. No. So it, yeah. if you're the five seed, especially as banged up as Bama is, and for the last ten days, Arkansas has looked like the Arkansas we thought we were going to get in December. Yeah, which is interesting as we get to our game. So I, <clears throat> I wrote down Alabama minus nine. If Griffin plays, and by the way, Griffin um, averages 11.1 points and 3.7 rebounds per game and makes 38.2% of his threes. I wrote down Bama minus nine without him, with him minus 10. I wrote down 175 for the total. Ken Palm's got Bama minus 16 and 174. Uh, I I would love Arkansas at plus 16. Um, you, uh, um... Sign yes. me up. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, they're three and two, <clears throat> excuse me, three and two straight up last five, four and one against the spread. They had the lead in the second half uh, 
even up by like as many as eight with like eight or nine minutes left, some roughly something like that at Rupp last Saturday. Um, obviously, they had the home loss uh, to uh, Vandy, which is uh, no bueno, but um, <clears throat> uh, got a win the other night, uh, beat LSU uh, by double digits, and also had a win at AM two weeks ago. So I would like Arkansas. Hey, now, this is important. That's a nooner, right? That's like that's like the first game on the slate. Yes, because there could be a whole lot of things that play into this thing, especially in the marquee game going to Knoxville. Because if let's say Arkansas pulls a rabbit out of its hat and beats Al- a beat up Alabama team, I'm not saying Kentucky Tennessee's a rivalry and they're going to go at each other and they're going to score a lot of points and, and we know that. But if all of the pieces fall into place. This is like the last week of the NFL regular season, you know? Yeah. Right. You got to make certain you know who's motivated and who's not. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I, looking at this, I guess Florida does. I don't know how all these tiebreakers would work, but F- Florida does have a chance to get inside that four or, or, or you know, get the double bye because they're only one game back of all these teams. Bama, Kentucky, South Carolina, and Auburn are all one game game ahead of Florida so anyway that's a lot to figure out but uh all right um a couple more notes uh over is hitting five straight for Arkansas nine of its last ten the over has hit an eight of the last that's nine be the the play, right, Brian? Brian that's got to be the play the right? over yeah yeah I mean yeah, I mean, Florida and Alabama, I was thought it was too high the other night at 177 and a half. It flew over. 185 and 87 is 192. Yeah, so I would probably play over all the way to 175. And, I mean, especially Alabama at home. And I think Mark Sears is going to really put on a show. Last time in, in, yeah. the, in the arena, I mean, he's going to declare for the draft. We all know it. And – uh, never the twain shall meet. So, I mean, but I'm 100% with you. If I see a 16, I am sprinting to the uh, bet online app on my uh, smarter than me phone to make certain I get I get logged in. I think I would be good with 14 and maybe even 13, but hopefully yeah. 16. And I yeah. think I would play the over at minus – or, uh, I'm sorry, at 175 uh, or fewer. So, we're on the same page there, right? Yes, sir. All right, moving, moving on. Texas A&M at Ole Miss, CBS, 2 p.m. Eastern. I made Ole Miss minus three. Ken Palm's got Ole Miss minus one with a total – of 145, Ole Miss is 14 and three straight up, eight and nine ATS at home. AM is five and six, both straight up and ATS on the road. Ole Miss has played itself out of bubble consideration with a two and seven slump, both straight up and ATS, including Tuesday night's loss at Georgia, which was the killer. And it's Henry Coleman, crippling L. A&M's Henry Coleman is questionable. He averages 9.8 points, 6.5 rebounds per game. Revenge spot for A&M because Ole Miss won 71-68 to in College Station. Your thoughts? Well, not much more than a week ago, I thought this was going to be a play-in game for a number one seed in the AIT bracket. But uh, now, who knows? I mean – that Georgia loss was brutal for the Rebels. I mean, and they're out. I, and, I don't even. Yeah, I don't even yeah, think I if they win agree. this or or get to the finals, I think they're done. They have to win the SEC tournament. They, they've got to win. They've got to win five games in a row. Or yep. no, they've got to win at least four games in a row. Because four wins in a row, if you start Saturday, and then you get there, that'll get you to what the 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 conference finals. And then, yep. or you can win four games in a row and get in, in the tournament and get there. So, but oh, Ole Miss is out. And in truth, Buzz Williams is going to bemoan uh, everything and how good the league is and how the league deserves an 18. Texas A&M's out too. I mean, in, in, in barring some Nashville magic, 
uh, some Music City magic, a Music City miracle for either one of these teams next week in Nashville. I mean, I, I wouldn't touch this game uh, with your deep pockets, Brian, because you just got no idea who's coming out. I mean, Ole, Ole Miss could really put out like a 38-point floater in this one after what happened Tuesday night. Yeah, and I expected to go to Lunardi's updated bracketology that he updated this morning. I expected to see A&M in the next four out, but like probably the seventh or eighth team out. They're not even in that this morning. Right. So I – now, if they were to win this one and win three games, which would mean, you know, two high quality wins, they're still but probably. Their conference record not, not. is so bad. And their non conference is not good. Yeah. I mean, Ole, yeah, they're Ole Miss is good. Yeah, they're, Ole Miss is out. I mean, Ole Miss yeah. needs actually a, probably a couple of wins to not have to sweat NIT. the NIT invites. Because the NIT rightly a couple years ago said, uh, I tell you what Ole Miss is going to need to do is make certain all the the mid-majors and lower conferences, those conference champions win their tournament because if a conference tournament – Automatic bids. Yeah. If if you're a conference regular season champion and you don't win your tournament, you get an automatic NIT bid, which I love that rule. I'm not. I'm not bagging on that rule. Yeah. I think that's a good rule, but because yeah. Ole Miss has got nobody but to blame but themselves. Two and seven in your last nine. Yep, yep, and a couple of embarrassing ones uh, as well. So, yeah, I'm. I'm with you. I, I just don't like this game. Don't want anything to do with it. All right, South Carolina at Mississippi State, SEC Network, two thirty p.m. Eastern. Um, Mississippi State did appear in Lunardi's last four buys. So, in other words, if they lose this one and their first game in the tournament, it's going to be a little iffy. I think they probably are still in, but, it, it, you know, somebody if a bid or two gets stolen, you know, if a, um, UNLV wins well, the Mountain West tournament, you know, it might get hit. We'll see. Go ahead. One of the things that I actually think I think that has really helped Mississippi State is the game we just talked about in Ole Miss and Texas A&M have pooped their pants uh, down the stretch. And this league is, by any measure, no worse than the third best league in the country and probably the second best behind the Big 12, which means they're probably going to get seven and Mississippi State then fills in at the seven. Now, you're right. Yeah. South Carolina goes to the hump and wears them out, and then they go uh, one and done in Nashville. Uh, those guys are going. Those guys will have cameras in their face on Selection Sunday because yeah. they're now on the bubble. But uh, which I think though is going to motivate the home crowd, and I, I like Mississippi State in this spot a lot. Okay, so I wrote down Mississippi State minus three. Ken Palm's got Mississippi State minus four and one third four. Well, still like I just, Mississippi I State. I South Carolina's punched their ticket, man. South Carolina, and I know yeah. we talked about motivation and seating and all that other stuff. South Carolina is is going to enjoy the spoils of what has been a great season, a season no one saw coming. No one. Not Nobody. Lamont Parrish couldn't have penciled this in that I'm going into last Saturday yeah. at currently holding the two spot in the SEC standings, even in his wildest dreams. So they're in Mississippi State, and Mississippi State's big. I mean, they are big yeah. and they are uh Miss, Mississippi State could be somebody as a seven or, or as a 10 that beats a seven. And scares the ever living snot out of it too. Because hey, I agree. They got some dudes. Oh no, no. Hubbard, Hubbard is a badass. Tolu is really, really good. And look, they were playing great. And I'm not saying that. So they had won five in a row. Heartbreaker to Kentucky. Go to Auburn. 
they got done to them what everybody not named Kentucky has gotten done. Well, to them and, and in probably Auburn. the worst spot of the year to go to to go to yeah. Auburn right there. I mean, they, that heartbreaker. They, they, were, they played their guts out yeah. in Knoxville. The previous home game was a, a Kentucky wearing Auburn out, and then the next thing you know, Auburn shows up and does what Auburn does at home. And Auburn had a whole week to prepare, didn't they? Yes, they did. Right? Yeah, yeah, that was a terrible spot. Okay, so um, Mississippi State eleven and three straight up, six seven and one ATS at home. South Carolina seven and three straight up, eight and two ATS on the road. Um, I don't know that I'm going to lay four just because I don't want to mess with Lamont Paris. Um, I think I would lay two or fewer. If it's if it's three or more, um, that's is this going to be one of your ever many, popular? This going to be one of your ever popular money game parlays that you you, you put like three or four money game ah, parlays into the mix. I, I I might would think about Mississippi State in a money line parlay, but I might think about South Carolina if this number gets to like five or five and a half. What what's the number you would not go any higher on Mississippi State? Seven. Oh wow. Okay, you like Mississippi State. Okay, I do. I'm not do. that bullish. Okay. Well, right. and, and, I just, hey, on, on a side tangent though, because it and it leads into our one of our next few games. There are a lot of the national uh, media voices saying that the the leader in the clubhouse for the Ohio State job is either Auburn's Bruce Pearl or South Carolina's Lamont Parrish. If you were the Ohio State AD, who would you hire? Mm. Where's Louisville in that mix, though? Is Louisville coming after either one of those? And well, would, you, would they go to Louisville or Ohio State? I, 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 right now, that Louisville job is yeah. toxic. But uh, – right. A little side tangent, just knowing him as well as I do, Lamont, who was in Chattanooga for several years up here with us, and we talked to him every week on the radio and did a lot of things with him in the newspaper. He grew up not far from Columbus, Ohio, and was a longtime Bo Ryan assistant in the Big Ten before he came to Chattanooga. Did not know that. Yeah, but was, Nate, was did a, you say Bru- huh? But did you say Bruce Pearl or Lamont Paris? Did you? Is that yeah. was that the question? Yes, I've seen some CBS sports guys saying. I, I I agree. Why would Bruce Pearl ever leave? He's got he's got this side of Kirby Smart. He's got the most job security of any major college coach in the country. And I mean, what's Bruce's age compared to Lamont's? Obviously, Lamont's younger, a lot younger. Oh yeah. Uh, Lamont, mid forties. Think Bruce is late fifties, upper fifties. I still think I I would have to take Bruce Pearl, but I don't think Bruce Pearl is going anywhere. But I love Lamont. But I well, think hey, I'd take you Bruce mentioned Pearl. two jobs. You mentioned two jobs. I think both those cool. guys are going to get sizable races in the next several months. Yes, or in the next several days. Um. Yes, yes. Uh, the funny, ah, uh, the silly season is here along with March. March is so fun. March is so fun. Okay. Um, so you like Mississippi State? I do. I'm in a holding pattern. Got to see that line. All right. The marquee game, Kentucky at Tennessee, tip off 4 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. I wrote down Tennessee minus six or six and a half. Uh, Ken Palm's got the Vols, minus 9, 163. Here's why I, I, I figured Ken Palm would be higher. I, I think the line might be higher. But Kentucky, as an underdog this year, 5-1 and one against the spread, four outright wins. They win 87-83 over Carolina in Catlanta as a one-point dog. They rallied to beat Florida 87-85 as a three-and-a-half-point road dog. They go to Auburn as a nine-point dog. They went 70-59. to 
They go to Mississippi State as a five-point dog. They win 91-89. The lone non-cover is a dog. They were catching three in College Station and lost by five in overtime. And then they covered uh, in a loss uh, against Kansas on a neutral. Um, and I just remember Kentucky going there. I want to say they were like 11 or so underdogs last year and winning outright. So, and, and I think Tennessee, no, I mean, look, both teams are going to be ready to play rivalry game, but Tennessee did just win the SEC. So right. I, I, I think it's going to be a close game. Um, what do you think? Well, I, I mean, how can you not take Kentucky in nine? I mean, if, right. if, it, if it's what Kim Palm puts out there, I, I actually think, I think this thing's going to be every bit the shootout it was in Rupp. When so that you game be like, like an over, yes, that what was that game? Yeah, like, I think one ninety. Uh, I got it right here. <clears throat> got it one ninety five as uh, Kentucky minus one hundred three to ninety two, and. That was Dalton Connect only having 16 points, right. 5 of 14 from the field. And, hey, and he did it this game, and he did it the other night too. Ziegler had 26 points, 13 assists, and three steals and hit 8 of 11 from the field and 3 of 6 from 3. And Josiah Jordan James had 26 points uh, in that game. Now, um, Wagner did not play in that game. Trey right. Mitchell was not was not as healthy as he is now, and actually went scoreless in 24 minutes. And Dillingham had 35, but he only played 27 minutes before fouling out. He was 14 of 20 from the field. I agree. If it's mid 160s, I like the over. I mean, I think the under the other night was more South Carolina than Tennessee. You yes. know, with, with uh, South Carolina and, and Tennessee pace. game going under and. Just pace. and- it's one of the 100%. reasons why that I think Tennessee is going to, unless every one of the big four, and the big four being Houston, UConn, Purdue, and Arizona, hold serve and win their conference, Tennessee's going to be in line for a one seed. And because the they need this game, look though. at their okay. resume and they can beat you in a lot of ways. And I mean, that is. I mean that's a big part of it. So, uh, but no, this one, this one's going to get fast paced, and it's just human nature for eighteen to twenty three year old kids when you've already got the one seed secure in the SEC tournament, the SEC championship secure. I'm not saying they're going to quit defensively, but I'm saying they're going to be more than happy in front of the home folks to turn this into a highlight run. And bar none, Kentucky's got more pros on their roster than any team in the country. And yep. so if you want to run with Kentucky, do it at your do it at your own peril. And Kentucky's healthy now. They've had stretches yep. this year where, where, you know, they were not healthy. They are healthy at the right time. I like how Big Z is finally getting more minutes uh, as well for the cats. So I think we're on the same page. We both like the over. Uh, and I would like, if I'm get, I think I would have to be getting probably seven and a half to take Kentucky. I'm going to go a different maybe direction eight. on here. I'm going to go a different direction huh? on here. Go ahead. What I you want Kentucky do? on the money line. Ooh, I hear you. I hear you. So, okay. If it's eight, you could be looking at a pretty good number. Maybe even plus 300. 375. Uh, yeah, I was saying maybe maybe even plus 300, you know. So, some books are a little more generous than others. I'm sure our good friends at Bet Online would be uh, uh, very, very generous. Very but uh, indeed. Absolutely. But we are recording here late morning, and we don't have lines, ladies and gentlemen, and so we apologize for that. But both teams hot. Kentucky's won four straight. Tennessee has won seven straight. And I'm talking about a home win over Auburn, a road win at Bama, a road win at South Carolina in the last three. That's good stuff. All right. So, Jay likes Kentucky big. We both like the over, uh, you know, assuming it's not – I mean, I, 
if Ken Palm's 163, I really doubt it's going to be, I mean, a maximum of three or four points higher to open. Maybe, maybe the market pushes it higher than that. But um, I doubt it's even 170. All right. Um, Florida at Vanderbilt. Okay. This is what I wrote down in my notes. Flat spot for the Gators. Smells yes. like a cruise control game. Get out with a W. Get on the plane. Go home. Because this is the last game of the year that we don't have to be sky high for. So, I made my number pretty small. Because, um, look, Vanderbilt played pretty good the other night against Kentucky. I mean, that was a close game. It was a misleading final. Uh, being a 16-point game. In fact, Vanderbilt was winning outright most of the first half. So I wrote down Florida minus 7.5 or 8. Ken Palm's got UF minus 11, total of 153. Um, Florida has won 10 of its last 13, but all three losses, they blew double-digit second-half leads, but monster win for Florida. So, you know, kind of let down, kind of flat. All that stuff applies for the Gators here after getting um, a fourth quad one win over Alabama on Tuesday night. What you thinking on this one? Uh, ter- a, a nightmarish spot for, for betters. You're 100% right. All they want to do is win. So the six or seven line, wherever you may, wherever Lenardi and those guys who study it way more oh. than I do – uh, Let me see where he's got us. Go ahead. Sorry. But wherever the the only the only thing here is just walk out of there with one point better, just one point better. Get back on the plane and then turn around and get back on the plane to Nashville. The other thing that's scary, and this is scary in both directions. This is clearly Jerry Stackhouse's last game. So. I mean, I mean, you almost have to believe that they're going to clear the deck and Vanderbilt's going to be in the market looking for a coach. So you don't know if those kids are completely tired of Stackhouse and this is going to be like a 35-point listless effort or if they're going to like rally and try to play one time for their coach. So, I mean, we've got one huge question mark on the Vandy side in terms of motivation. And we know all Florida wants to do is to win this game either 31-30 or 78-77. Yeah. Um, I am not implying it's a large opinion, but I will be on Vandy if they're catching double digits. The Gators and Lunardi's latest are a six seed taking on South Florida as an 11 seed. So get this win, get two wins in Nashville. I think Florida's a five seed. Uh, but you know what? If we win one and lose in overtime in a, a good game where we, you know, we don't play poorly and we get fresh legs, I call it fresh legs theory. When you lose early, that's kind of your cop out that you lost early in the conference uh, tournament. I'd be fine with that as well. So and uh, hey, you and you're not going to lose money as a Florida fan as long as as Kentucky wins a couple of games. You can then sell your ticket book to all of the uh, uh, the Big Blue Nation coming down from Lexington, uh, descending on Nashville on that Thursday. I went to 17 SEC tournaments with my dad, and he would get. So happy if Florida was winning and Kentucky lost so we could go shop for better tickets for, right. the, you know, the right. next games. we get, get better seats because they would be out of there. They'd be giving them away. Not giving them away, but, you know, they were ready to get the hell out of town. And on um, the flip side of that, if we lost, he wanted Kentucky to win so he could sell them for top dollars. So, yeah, uh, we, know, we know how all that works. So, I'm in on Vandy if it's double digits. You lean Vandy? Where? where what's your final call? I, I do. Uh, I lean Vandy, but uh, I, I, there are better games on the board in my mind just because the variables here are too great. Because sure. what happens if those kids have completely quit? What happens if 
the the midweek game was the last really good effort they were going to give Stackhouse. And Florida just shows up and pistol whips them. Could happen. And, and you're and you're you got a full menu of Saturday games and you're betting on a bad team. So I get right. it. Um and again, it's not a large opinion, but I just think Florida's gonna be flat. I think Vandy's played pretty well uh here in the last couple of weeks. All right, let's go. Georgia at Auburn, SEC network, six thirty. PM Eastern. I wrote down Auburn minus 15 and a half or 16. Ken Palm's got 17 and 149. What you think? I'm laying it. Sure. It's all I mean, in pass. I, I, mean, I mean, I mean, how can I how can I not? I mean, I yeah. mean, we've now been doing this show long enough through the from from early in December when we were overlapping LSU over and Auburn at home and I've made money on both. I'm laying it because here's the other thing I, I do believe. I think Bruce Pearl is begging for South Carolina to win and then going to really put the foot down the on the accelerator against Georgia so that Auburn can be the three seed, the way the current tiebreakers rank, and see South Carolina. Bruce Pearl loves him a whole lot of Bruce Pearl. And if he can get to the SEC championship game against the winner of Tennessee and maybe Kentucky, he's going to be the star of Selection Sunday. He And don't think – I mean, he's still building a program in terms of prominence and notoriety and, and, and all of those things. SEC tournaments still matter at Auburn. I mean – Yeah. So, a three-seed – is a big deal for Auburn. And there's going to be a lot of dudes. Jalen Williams playing his last game. You got to think Janai Brooms playing his last game. You got to think, uh, I mean, there are a couple, three other seniors on that roster who are playing their last game 10 deep. And that place is going to be nuts. And what does Georgia have to play for? This one could be third. Uh, So Auburn won 97-76 at Georgia, um, which makes me think 149 is a little low, but the under has cashed in three straight uh, for Georgia, and it is a full menu of Saturday games. I I don't have to be playing every side in total here. Um, I think I would lay up to – 17. I don't know that I'd lay more than 17. Just because I don't like – I just don't like laying big numbers. How, how – you'd lay it up to 20? Yeah. Or whatever. Whatever they give you. Yeah. Hey, I've got to it take it like, at this point. I mean, I love of my course, wife unconditionally. It would, I mean, I love my wife unconditionally. I have now – I'm vested. I am vested in, in LSU football over with Jaden Daniels taking snaps. And all right. I was home, going – that's, that's where I was going. I was like, uh, even if the LSU regular season finale was 95, I mean, I shouldn't even ask you that question. You, you just – I'm, I'm, I'm going over. Going, I, yeah. I, I'm going over. I'm going to beg for overtime, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pull that thing out 52-45. Yeah. All right. So, uh, now we got Missouri at LSU, which is uh, basically a pass. <laughs> unless you- <laughs> Well, what time, I made what, time does that game tip off? what time does that game tip off? Like midnight? 8.30 p.m. Eastern, SEC Network. SEC. I doubt you're going to watch any. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yes. yes, 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 you are correct. All right, so I made LSU 10. Ken Palm made it 9. I assume it's a pass for you. Oh, God, yes. I, hey, I, honestly, we do this for a living, and I'm trying to pay as much attention to college basketball as I possibly can. Sure. With all the other Ain't got time to on. watch that. Ain't got time to watch uh, that. And, and I haven't had time to watch LSU or Missouri for really, unless I liked somebody they were they were playing against. Right. I mean, I, I, Missouri's got to fire that dude, right? Because that no. – that, this is a disaster. No, no, no. It, 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 he had a great year last year. Remember? He, he, uh, he, and okay. he got an extension. Okay. 
They it, they, they signed him to an extension during the SEC tournament after they upset. Was it Tennessee? They upset because they, they were have. worried. Lin- they were worried Leonard Hamilton was going to retire and FSU right. was going to come right. after him because uh, his daughter is on my niece's soccer team in Tallahassee. He's got a daughter in Tallahassee. So Mizzou's worried FSU's going to come after him. But I'm hearing Leonard Hamilton might get another year uh, at FSU. Just one. But so anyhow, um, he signed a lucrative extension. Look, it's been a disaster this year, but I still think this guy can coach. Um, We'll give him a mulligan. Their best transfer, Caleb Grill, has been hurt all year from Iowa State. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, All right. We got any party. Hey, brother. You got anything on Duke, Carolina? I mean, if they make Duke like seven, I would I would be interested in Carolina. Maybe even six, but there's a lot of options on the board. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, Let me see I what really Ken Palm's got. They, I really wish they wouldn't play this game on the last Saturday of the season when – a whole lot of things have already been decided. I mean, I know it's a rivalry game, and, of course, ESPN will be there because half of their college basketball analyst staff went to Duke. So, I mean, uh, of course they're all going to – I mean, this this is probably when they, they schedule their reunions, for Christ's sake. I mean, so uh, I don't know. Uh, I do like I do like the under tonight, San Diego State, Boise State. Uh, on a, and this is Friday night. Uh, it's late. Hopefully, we get this thing posted. I saw it at one thirty-six and a half. Both of those teams are really slow, and they play great D. Uh, and I and I'm I'm now like teeing it up for you because I know you've done some some uh, some some of that mixed martial arts stuff that you uh, you love so much. So uh, the stage is yours, brother. Yep, and you know. When I see my side squad, Leon Rice's Boise State Broncos catching seven and a half, you know I'll be on Boise State tonight as well. All right, um, so uh, UFC 299, I'm just going to rip through these real quick. Apologies if I'm uh, going a little too fast. You can uh, hit the rewind button. I'm just going to get my UFC odds up here. So in the co-main event, UFC 299, um, tomorrow night, I'm going with uh, the pride of Lafayette, Louisiana, Dustin, the diamond, uh, Poye, he was the first to hit the scales, uh, this morning made weight. Um, and he is a plus plus one eighty five underdog to, to Benoit St. Denis, who's on a five fight winning streak, but has never faced anybody, uh, of, of Poye's ilk. In fact, he's never faced a top 10 heavyweight, much less a top, uh, five and Dustin's being disrespected with these odds. And he's never lost back to back fights and he's off. Uh, a loss to Gaethje. I'll also go Kevin Holland, minus 125 over uh, Michael Venom Page. A smaller opinion, Gilbert Burns, plus 145 to uh, Jack Della Madalana. And um, give me also Song Yadong, plus 110 over Peter Yan. And my favorite play is Jelton Almeida, minus 115 over Curtis Blades. And here's you, uh, a money line parlay with... Uh, this uh, promotional newcomer in a heavyweight fight, Robles de Spena. He's got knockouts in three seconds, four seconds, and 12 seconds in his last three fights. And he is a minus 340 favorite. I want him in the parlay, along with Macy Barber, who is minus 210. And then we'll cap the parlay off with Sean O'Malley in the main event. That three-leg parlay should get back about plus 160 to plus 160. Five, he's Jay Greason. Whoa, I'm Brian. Ed- no, not out yet. One of those guys' name was Sean Ladong. Chinese phenom Song Yadong. I'm gonna send you. Pick- <laughs> I'm gonna. That's send- he's good a- advice. And if you can get Song Yadong over the weekend, baby, you've already won. Yes, I will send you pictures of him. <laughs> no, uh, via- no, you can't via- do that. I've Via got a Twitter DM. Phone. You send me song your dong pictures. I'm gonna get fired. 
No! Oh, come on, man. I'm talking about pictures at the press conference last night. He had his shades on. He was styling, man. He was looking good. Uh, song you dong, buddy. All right, I'll send you a highlight clip of him winning by knockout Saturday night. That's what I'll send you. All right. Any other uh, comments, observations? Well, I really hope we get to see y'all next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. All right. I go. All right. I Southeastern 14. He's Jay Greason. I'm Brian Edwards. And good luck with your bets. And we will talk to you next Friday. See ya.